So hello, um, I'm Neil Phillips, the Wine Tips, and so I'm the UK Ambassador of the Prosecco Doc Consortium. So I've been involved with Prosecco Doc now since 2014, since I first started presenting at Taste of London. And I present all around the country, typically. So I would be doing lots of the food festivals like Foodies, for example, obviously uh, Taste of London, um, and also lots of the wine schools, too, around the country, and as well as working some of the trade side with the uh, WSET, Wine Spirit Education Trust, as you know, and also with London Wine Trade Fair, Plumpton Wine College. And I also present quite a lot with Daniela Cortellini, the chef at the Italian Embassy, and, and Daniela does lots of lots of uh, work, as you know, and appears on Saturday Kitchen quite a bit too. So I will be doing all that. What I will do, we'll go into a bit more detail and have a much more of a chat, but that's just to give you a top line. That, and I've been in the drinks industry since uh, 1986, when I used to have hair, folks. So uh, <laughs> I, used to have <laughs> <laughs> I used to have loads. Uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm envious <laughs> of the others there. But um, and one the other thing to say is as well over the years I've done a lot of work um, actually selling to the to the on trade to hotels and restaurants. And in, in, with companies like Anotra Wines, for example, I worked with Pernod Ricard, but also to add as well, done a lot of work with chefs over the years as well, which I love, always love doing. So there we go. Who's cool. going to go? Brilliant. Who wants to go next? Andrew. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm just surprised that Neil, you were legally drinking in 1986. So <laughs> 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 hey, that's a top response, that is. <laughs> um, I'm Andrew Coney. I run the Harry Hotel here in uh, Belgravia in London. Uh, currently closed, so 85 bedrooms above me, uh, all empty. And uh, sadly, uh, this is our third lockdown. Mm. So keeping your spirits high and being positive and I've just sat and watched two corks fly out of the Prosecco bottles without any intervention by me. Oh, so wow. It's a bit like an artillery thing going on here. There's a gun salute, but uh, <laughs> looking forward to, uh, to, to tucking in. I mean, it's only half past three, but what the heck, eh? Yeah, <laughs> 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 Thanks, Andrew. Andrew, how long have you been in the industry for? Um, since before 86. Um, <laughs> I, I left school and uh, started in a kitchen uh, back in 1983. Oh, so wow. I've been going ever since uh, and getting ever more decrepit ever since, but, um, <laughs> but having it more and more fun all the time as I go along. Brilliant stuff. Love that. Love the fact you started in a kitchen as well. Yeah. <laughs> And Mark, you're from Buxted Park, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, I've worked for handpicked hotels for uh, now 20, it's going to be 20 years um, oh. as the full and average manager. But my experience is uh, I've been in the industry for 45 years. So okay. since I was 12, all my family used to run and own restaurants in, uh, back home in France in Compiègne, which is about 35 miles north of Paris. But uh, I touch every aspect. I was um, I went to Ritz in, in Paris, London, Mirabel, when it was the Mirabel, uh, not on the uh, somewhere that I don't write at all, Mr. Marco Pia White, say no more. <laughs> um, and uh, I was, uh, I went to Hilton Park Lane. I uh, was a butler on the yachts, a private home in Hollywood. I studied wine for five years. Um, I worked on a cruise ship airline, Air France, at my own restaurants and uh, and I uh, met my wife on a cruise ship. She was a choreographer, singer, dancer, was a restaurant manager. Wow. Fell in love with the long legs when yeah. she was doing the French cancan. <laughs> uh, but uh, now I, uh, I, I just love my job. I'm a, I'm a caterer, I'm a hosp uh, hospitality is my life. Um, I think when my wife said, when are you gonna, re when are you gonna retire? Uh, I'm never. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, when I retire from handpicked, I want to be a, a professional Toastmaster. I want to yeah. be involved still with the hospitality. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I was a chef for nine years as well. So yeah, it's it's my life. <laughs> wow, yeah. Neil, so, Neil's intimidated now. <laughs> no, don't be. I, uh, I'm an absolute, my daughter say, uh, Giselle, say, you're a crazy papa you are. But yeah, I <laughs> love my job. <laughs> Just love my job. Got so, it, 
And James and Nina, you guys run the Black Bull, don't you? Yeah, we yeah we're co-owners uh, of the Black Bull at Sedba, uh, eighteen bedroom boutique hotel. Uh, we opened in two thousand eighteen, so we're relatively new on the scene. Been closed for nearly a year of that. Um, we had another business in uh, Sedba, which was a three hairs little still bistro. Do. Yeah, we still do. We're still do. <laughs> we're still do. <laughs> now <one of> is <laughs> now a wine shop and deli because uh, it was too small to open back up as a as a bistro or cafe. Um, I've been in the trade for since 96, not quite as long as some of you, but I've been on, <laughs> on and off, worked in Manchester for a long time, worked in different uh, mixture of chain restaurants, mainly restaurants rather than hotels, chain restaurants and independents, um, yeah, and ended up back in Nina, come on, give us... I've, I've not worked nowhere near as long as anybody else here, but um, I, I'm... Did my just my uh, training in London at the University of West London, which used to be Thames Valley University. Ah, yes. um, and did my BSc there, and then I did my MSc at um, City Col uh, City University with um, in food policy. So I've always been involved in food, but I just kept being kind of dragged back into a kitchen. I think, um, yeah. So at the moment, um, we're just working on figuring out what we want to do. With this, when we, when we yeah, open after back we up. open back up, yeah, how how we want to where we want to take it, really. And I suppose the, the one thing from all this is it's given us a little bit of time to to plan and look at how the business runs and and different opportunities. I mean, we we always wanted to run a shop and a deli, uh, which we've now put online uh, in the three hairs, but we could never have changed it because people were time. used to it as it was. So yeah. it's given a good. It's a bit an expensive way to experiment, but you know there there has been some. So the odd bit of bonus, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And Jessica and Shirley, you guys actually. Can... Um, so we're Red Kite PR. We are Casa Prosecco UK. So we represent the uh, Prosecco winemakers um, in the DOC regions. In a seat, we we represent them over here. Uh, we are a hospitality focused consultancy, and. Um, most of our clients are chefs and restaurants. Um, we have a couple of hotels, mostly chefs and restaurants. And uh, we are um, uh, as knowledgeable on the food side as we are on the wine side, actually. So that's that's a particular strength of ours. I'm sorry you can't see my picture, but just to give a heads up, I've got a developed Bell's palsy. So I've got a bit of a face problem at the moment. So it's not that easy to talk. <laughs> it's not that easy to talk at the moment. But I'm gonna, I will, I'm gonna leave everyone else to it. Um, but if there's anything, you know, at, at the end of the session that you need Jessica and I to look after, um, any further information or any more samples or anything else that we could do for you, then please um, just get in touch. We'd be more than happy to help. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you. Um, no, go on now. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I'm just saying thank you. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just showing I'm a nice guy, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your shirt already said so much. Well, I know. <laughs> boat, by the way, we're just, just to touch on this, this has got a boat song, by the way, but I have got one quite a few of these. But not <laughs> I'm going to get one with wines on, okay, the next time. We'll have to do some research for you after the call to find you the perfect wine shirt. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Add it to my task list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm in pink. Well, I think a good place to, to start is maybe for you guys on the hotel side to just talk a little bit about your sort of relationship with Prosecco at the moment and, you know, how does your buying processes work? How do you work with your suppliers? Um, just yeah, that sort of thing, really. Go. <laughs> well, Mark, Mark, give, give us some stuff. Yeah, yeah go for it, Mark. Yeah, no, um, I mean, Prosecco has been, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, quite popular since uh, since 2010, maybe, 11. Uh -huh. right. But the, 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 the progress since has been absolutely ridiculous in a way mm. of the the amount of the, the popularity of it. Uh, I guess the price has something to do with it, perhaps. Um, 
but uh, particularly Buxted Park, uh, I've been there since uh, 16 and a half years. So it really went in the peak of when the Prosecco went a bit cuckoo. Mm. And uh, the, the mainly a main business is, uh, is, is wedding. We have a dream between 130 to 150 weddings a year. Uh, it's always been the same with, with this uh, business at Buxted. Of course, now things are slightly changing because of the situation we're in. So it'll be very interesting how we're gonna, where we're gonna be in the next five years. Um, but uh, Prosecco, uh, wedding-wise, uh, ridiculous sell, ridiculous. Um, we we in a partnership with uh, the the company that takes care of uh, handpicked hotels, uh, are a company called Bibendum. So okay. uh, we've been dealing with them since the very beginning, to be honest with you, uh, since day one. So they recently got the contract again. Um, and we, we use mainly uh, Bristol, Prosecco and uh, Bellstar. Uh, those are the two Prosecco, only two Prosecco that we use uh, at the moment. Um, our chairman, Julian Guy Hans, uh, owns uh, quite a few winery, one main one in Tuscany. Um, mm. So the, the involvement, the, the personal involvement with the, the, the wine list is immense and uh, it's been even more this last year and a half to two years. Uh, in fact, they even um, organized for their own wine to be sold uh, within all the handpicked properties. Mm. Uh, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm just uh, amazed and gobsmack. I'm a, I'm a typical, I'm a champagne man. In mm. fact, you know, I'm a total champagne man. I love champagne. Um, <laughs> But Prosecco has just, uh, even me as a, as a Frenchman, took me by, by surprise. Mm. Uh, the, you know, it's never, it's very rare, <laughs> I have to say, or shall I say, uh, can we have a glass of, uh, of, of, uh, of champagne? You know, it's more, can we have a glass of Prosecco? Mm. And I just think that um, looking at some of the, the bottle style that uh, you have sent me recently, the one that we're going to try, Mm. I'm amazed on the actually um, habillage of the bottle, mm. you know, the, the, the elegance of the habillage of the bottles. And, and some of them are a little bit, uh, wow, particularly the pink one. And yeah. I took it among myself and I, and I contacted my daughter and I said, darling, can you get in touch with your friends? And uh, I took a picture of all of them. Mm. And I say, my daughter is 21 years old, the other one is 16. And I say, well, Leah, can you send it to your friends and see which one they like best? You know, just mm -hmm. a look, uh, not even before opening it. Because at that age, uh, the flavor, I don't think is as important. The look seems to be more the one. Mm -hmm. And all of them went for that, uh, for that pink one, you know, that, uh, that this one. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, the Vitega. Yeah. Right. And then I sent it to um, some friend of ours, which I tried to be a bit clever looking at the, the age of the people. And, and again, they were about 30 to 40, they went for that one. Mm -hmm. And I thought, come on. You know, <laughs> then, certainly only two of my database guests, which I've got a list of, went for elegance. And I think to me, this is quite elegant. It's, 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 uh, it reminds me of a, a particularly one called Bouzy Abel Le Pitre. I don't know if you remember the Bouzy from the Coteau Champenois. Mm -hmm. uh, very much like that. Um, but, uh, and even the Grand Siècle from uh, Laurent Perrier, oh, right. very similar style of bottle and yeah. quite quirky. Uh, but I was shocked that, uh, and I thought to myself, you know what, maybe I should have one of those uh, on, on display uh, at, uh, at Buxted Park. Uh, but we, 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 we do sell uh, a lot of wine. We obviously operate when we have wedding with a menu mm. testing and wine testing. Uh, I've got a sommelier as well. I'm very lucky at uh, Buxted. So, you know, we, with my restaurant manager, we all get on and, and be involved with it because it's quite a lot of fun to sell and upsell mm. this kind of, of, of wines. Yeah. Um, but, no. um, yeah, sorry. I, I'm just going to ask you a question. Sorry to interrupt. Just, is, no, please, please you know, do. But, but I, mean, I think what we'll do is it'd be great, as I said, just to hear from everybody and then we'll, we'll taste the first Prosecco. Of course, you know, of course. Andrew's 
have a look. He's, he's ready, I think. And uh, I just get involved. Mark, uh, I get carried away. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think we're all ready. But I mean, no, but it's important, Mark, because you're listing, you know, you've got two Proseccos, for example. And I maybe when I would hold back from everybody's OAR, I'll just do three or four minutes top line, folks, no more than that. But just to sort of some general points, just picking up on Mark's point about mm -hmm. the growth of Prosecco and growth of Prosecco dot. But mm -hmm. but it's because you're doing the the two different, you know, say you're having an extra dry, maybe and having a brute style of Prosecco, which is good. Because yeah, and the other the, the other thing which I would say, uh, out of the, the four that you, you send me, you send me three rosé. I do not do rosé. Uh, mm. Prosecco. Very interested. Very interested. Well, that's on... new. That's new. And that's what we wanted to sort of make sure yeah. you realise yeah. that, you know, it's only actually been available since the back end of last year. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's something which is, um, which everybody is very excited about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Industry and consumers, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, Andrew, what, what about you? I mean, given your location, I imagine that champagne is probably the drink that's more of choice over Prosecco, or...? My... It oh. is, it's inevitable, I guess, because of the area. We sell about four to one. So, okay. and that's having an Italian restaurant as well. Mm -hmm. So, despite having an Italian restaurant, we sell more champagne in there than we do Prosecco. Um, we're about to launch a brunch, uh, which isn't particularly an Italian concept, but we're just thinking coming out of lockdown that um, there's going to be an appetite for people to be more social mm -hmm. and want mm -hmm. to just do brunch so we're gonna we're going to uh, start up a, a an italian brunch and we, we are in the process of choosing a prosecco right now so it's perfect timing oh. um, because i think uh, it'll be bottomless and it'll be uh, all part of the offering so it, it's ideal timing um but it's a little bit contrary to what the area is used to but i mm -hmm. think it very well with uh, with the with the Italian restaurant and the Italian restaurant is is successful, so uh, I think we've got an audience out there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Prosecco is it's making its mark. I, I, I'm just a little nervous about some of these bottles and some of the, the presentation. You know, to Mark's comment, you know, that the, there's a certain blinginess about some of them. I don't know if that's actually a word. But, <laughs> We, we, we know what you mean. Uh, but, you know, yeah. when I, and I look at that, 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 that sits very comfortably within our environment. Mm -hmm. When I look at that, I'm a little nervous. Okay. But Andrew, I haven't tried them yet. Yeah. And then you just don't yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think um, one thing to say, actually, just broadly as well, across, because and Jessica will say this too, you know, we've had a lot of, with Prosecco Rosé, which we'll come on and talk about in more, a bit more detail, and when we start tasting the wines as well, but, but we've had a big range of Prosecco Rosés to taste over the last month or two since we had Prosecco Rosé coming to the, Doc Rose coming to the UK for the first time in November, and just in terms of, of style of packaging, Andrew, and picking up with all of you on this, you'll see a big range of styles here in terms of a shapes of bottles b in terms of packaging as well so we can very much pick up on that pick up on that as well really for you where and i think to say with that range of packaging packaging sitting in different areas of hospitality really for yep. sure mm. Not most definitely okay? i it's could give you some to, to sort of call it out uh, it seems very shallow to call it out but it's relevant you know just just yeah. not, you know it, it people perceive things around the packaging, not necessarily what's the content. So yeah. we've got to be very, very perceptive and, yeah. and aware of it. I think, I think the, the wines that we've actually sent you uh, in, in packaging terms are probably, um, certainly the Astoria and the um, Bottega are probably the most overtly packaged yeah. <laughs> of the wines. I mean, we could have sent you another selection of wines which would have been in more discreet bottles. But actually, what we wanted to do was also, um, you know, to sort of get just just see that. But also, as, as, as Neil said, during the actual tasting, you'll just see they are actually fantastic wines. Mm. I mean, they really are good quality wines. They're really good quality wines. So, um, but you know, we'll, you know, we will we'll get that. But the feedback is really helpful. Thank you. And you know, fizz is fun. And yes. Get that. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, people drink it to celebrate and. Uh, my goodness, they really want to this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, you know, let's not get too overly concerned about packing. Mm -hmm. It's about yes. you know, drinking some great fizz. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. And James and Nina, I know that um, previously I've sort of seen that you guys have had record year last year in, sale, in sales of fizz. I mean, how have yeah, you... Yeah, we, we sold a lot more last year. I think the people wanted okay. to celebrate. We changed our menu as well. I think we, we did a smaller menu that changed more often. So we had uh, we had a big, you know, 100 plus wines. And I think the way that the, the wine list, the smaller wine list is put together, then the, the bubbly seems to be selling better. Maybe where just where it sits and it's more easy for people to see. I'll be honest, we don't put, not often put Prosecco on the menu. Uh, we sell it, we sell it and because it, it sells itself. But I never, you know, as our entry level fizz, just before we close, we had an Argentinian fizz on. Uh, we'll have a mm. British one on there, and then we're going to mm. Champagne and Grosjean Champagne. We don't necessarily shout about having the prosecco. It's just because I just find that people order it naturally. It's a natural, mm -hmm. it's a natural sell, and it, that kind of frustrates me in some ways <laughs> because and and I know there's such a variety of quality of proseccos. You yeah, know, I'm a Italian restaurant, and there's you know you can pay hundreds of pounds for a bottle of prosecco in a restaurant, uh, or you know, and the, but there's, the market is sort of flooded with maybe not as good Proseccos as, as what is out there. It's the same with Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio has made a name for itself as it is, and there's massively varying degrees of Pinot Grigio in the world. Um, so I guess for us, it would be, for looking at Prosecco, it would be looking at uh, the better Proseccos, the higher. Again, mm -hmm. with the packaging, um, I think the more traditional one sits better with our with our brand. Mm -hmm. um, but are certain, I know there's, many of our customers would love the, the, the pink, pink bottle. Ones, yeah. 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 That's yeah. just it. I'm I'm the one that I tend to do the wine list uh, and the ordering, etc. So maybe that's just my personal taste, and maybe I should you know and again. He's listen a bit to the older. He's a bit older than me, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a labour of love for me, the wine list. It's very much my personality on there, I suppose. So it kind of conflicts with a bit of that. But um, if the wine tastes good, that's the important bit. Mm. Let, let's let's take I would I because I've I've looked at you I've looked at the website obviously I looked at the Blackboard website I've looked at you, and, you know, you've got a great list and there's loads of I mean it's very interesting some of the things you obviously specialize in which is great for yeah a it's a little bit more yeah a little bit more niche there's still conventional wines on there but we you know we try with smaller producers organic biodynamic and you know yeah. everybody talks about this natural wine but there's a lot of rubbish natural wine out there as well <laughs> so it, it, it's it's kind of <laughs> It's trying to find good wine, isn't it? There's good conventional wine, there's good biodynamic wine, there's rubbish of, of, of each as well. It's all it's all about the flavour. It's all about you know how it tastes, what it goes with. There's always a there's always a wine for a different mood, and I suppose it's capitalising on that with people. Can I just ask you, with the sparkling wines that you are selling, are they mostly sold as an aperitif, or are you are people drinking them with their food, with the meals, or were they drinking with the meals? With it, obviously before. Um, the last time that we were open, we had as many tables as uh, rooms here, pretty mm. much because of the social distancing, etc. Mm. So it tended to be people that were eating, so they'd have a glass of bubbly before their meal. Obviously, right. when we have a bar area and we've got an outside area as well, they were drinking. Mm -hmm. They were drinking a lot more, uh, a lot more prosecco. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. what we had on the bar. We had that on the bar list prosecco at, at, at that time. It's just since we reopened, we changed it completely. Right. Uh, okay. But yeah, I mean, the, the demand for Prosecco is massive, you know, we could, mm -hmm. people want Prosecco, I'm just being difficult. <laughs> James, we, we look forward to the time, okay? I mean this in a nice way, okay? I look forward to uh, seeing a Prosecco doc on the wine list, but when... Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I know there's, I know there's some lovely, lovely yeah. Proseccos out there, it's just, it's just getting the right one. Mm. No, and, I, and I'm not wanting to sound heavy-handed about that, I'm just saying that in the context of yeah. what you're saying and the range that's there. So is it, um, should I just do three or four minutes just about what we're doing and yeah, then we'll yeah, get some wines and then let, let's pick up and keep chatting. Is that all right, folks? Yeah, just yeah, to, yeah. Because in terms of, I think from Shelley, you may well have had through our little Prosecco dot leaflet in your, in your cases there. It's very useful, actually. This is, this is something whenever we do a session, whether that would be anything we're doing virtually, obviously we've had to do you know, all the activity last year pretty much was all virtual and it was went really well. I was talking to Zoe about this beforehand. But really just to remind everybody in terms of our protected designation, 
designated area of origin. It's two regions, northeast of Italy, as you know, Veneto and Fridia Venezia Julia. So you have, and I, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to go into great detail because I know you know lots of this stuff, but you've got nine provinces, two regions. And I think we're stretching from the west across these about 270 kilometers. In terms of Veneto, Veneto is responsible for about 75% of the production. But what I, and Treviso, out of the nine provinces is the, pro the province that we talk about most of all. Having said all that, and this is something I really want to, and, and in terms of range of styles and range of producers, is in Fruity Venezia Giulia, um, you'll see actually on the, on the little booklet there, we've got all the uh, nine provinces named. One of them, Pordenone, which is actually in Friuli, I think there are some fantastic Prosecco dot wines coming from there and some really, really good producers. So I think it's an important thing to say as well is that it's about both of the regions and it's really important to emphasize that as well. Um, I think just to say a lot of people, and we're going to taste an extra dry white Prosecco in a few minutes time, a lot of people's first journey into Prosecco dot will be extra dry because it has been about 70% of the production. Brute interest in, so, Interestingly enough, is increasing in production. So when I'm talking about that, and again, it's all in the leaflets here, folks, is, is talking about residual sugar levels. So with extra dry, you're going from 13 through to 18. And brute, you're obviously going from zero up to 12. But it's also interesting to say is that we have extra brute coming in now from zero to six grams. And actually, Shelley's point, we were just asking Nina and James there about food pairing as well. And for yourself, Andrew, and what you're planning to do, these are clearly wines that actually are really great for food pairing. So that's all going on, all that development. And I'd also say to you as well is that in terms of second fermentation, you know it's Martinotti, Sharma method, minimum of 30 days second fermentation. When we taste the Astoria Rose, they're an example of a producer that always pretty much goes for the minimum. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just that freshness is great. But we are seeing quite a trend for wines with longer lees contact. So that is coming through. Some producers now 60 days. Another producer, which I'm showing tomorrow, Valdo, 90 days with their bio Prosecco. So again, just in terms of range, that's just showing you what's going on. Even in my seven years, I've seen a big, big change in all of this. So I think this is really exciting stuff, you know, and I think when you get people like Plumpton Wine College, the WACT, how they're reacting to the wines, how hunters are reacting wines, very importantly, obviously, when we've done all the virtual stuff, all the virtual gigs over the last year has been great. A couple of other pieces, then we'll, then we'll roll on to tasting, is, is because, James, you talked about this, you know, we're obviously talking about natural wines, um, just to say 99.5% of what we produce is tank. We do actually have Calfondo Prosecco, which is is fermented in bottle. But the, so, but pretty much it is all about tank for us, all about the Martinotti method. But the other thing to say is in terms of organic, obviously that's that's grown with us and we know that that's becoming an important piece of a list and food. And vegan wines most definitely has become a big thing here in Prosecco land. I've seen that change. One thing I would say, what we want to do is we're seeing that certification on some of the bottles. But as a more general piece, and I'm sure you'd agree with this, there are some wines that are suitable for vegans but don't have the certification on yet. So as you well know, that again, even with an importer would tell us that, that is still the thing that we want to develop more of. But it's definitely out there because you would talk to people and they go, well, yeah, actually it's vegan. It's on the tasting, it's on the fish technique, for example. So we're very much a uh, big, big drive on that. And that's proving really effective. And sustainability obviously is big on us, big for us. And when we planted new vineyards, over the last few years, it's been about sustainability. It's been about having hedges, you know. So all of these things have taken place. And this is sort of detail, which I think is really important, you know. So that's just to drill down a bit, really, just so you get a, a handle on what we're doing. And, and very much one of the things from last year with all the virtual sessions was about having the wines not on their own, but actually with food as well. That came across big time. Because we asked people to sort of have aperitivo time and say, look, why don't you get some mini pizzas, some Grana Padano cheese, and then you'd see what people had done on the screens. It was like they'd gone beyond the Peritivo time. <laughs> we had amazing dishes. But it was really great on the chat, actually, just people to say, I'm really enjoying this story. It tastes great with this dish. And I think this is brilliant, really. So